Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins. And this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. I expect you're asking yourself, yeah, how comes he's wearing that black shirt with the shiny bits on it? It's kind of monochromatic, isn't it? It's normally quite colourful. What happened? Did someone die? Well, no. No one's died. Well, okay. A few people have died. But that's not why I'm wearing this shirt. I'm, I'm wearing this shirt to celebrate the hives. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk about the song I hate to s- sorry hate to say I told you so, which was released in 2000, produced by Pele Gunderfeld, or Gunnerfeld, I think. Um, it was first released in 2000, and it's known as the Hives' sort of signature song. Um, in March 2005, Q placed it. That's Q Magazine. I'm not sure if Q Magazine is still going actually. Um, anyway, they placed it at number 54 in its list of the 100 greatest guitar tracks. So you know it's good. Um, I'll do the theme tune, we'll have a watch of it, and then uh, talk about the highs for a little bit. Cool. Excitement. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Oh, yeah. The hives are from Sweden. Um which is in Scandinavia, which is in Europe. Um, they've released five studio albums. Seems like a, s- a, 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 a meagre yield for a, a band that's been going for such a long time. They rose to prominence in the early noughties during the garage rock revival. Um, the band has been acclaimed by music critics as one of the best live rock bands. The Hives always dressed in matching black and white tuxedos because it makes them look like they belong together. Lovely stuff. I've talked about this book by Tony Hatch. Let me just try and find some information on that because that's pretty much one of the first lessons that Tony Hatch talks about in his book. Tony Hatch, of course, being an English composer. So, yeah, I think Tony Hatch wrote a book called um, So You Want to Be in the Music Business. And one of the first things that he says uh, that bands ought to do is all wear the same suit. And uh, the hives, obviously have made a career doing that. It's actually, they've made a career by doing brilliant music, but, you know, the suits is just a lovely side benefit of it. Mm, they've changed direction somewhat. <laughs> no, it's an advert. It's all right. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's an advert for pesto, which I would imagine is targeted adverts, because I'm always going on about different pasta sauces um, that I like. I love those Perspex kits. I always, ima- I always sort of um, associate the see-through drum set with uh, John Bonham, but obviously this is a totally different uh, configuration to the John Bonham one. He's keeping it super simple. No rack toms on the kit there. You'll notice that just a floor tom, a snare drum, one cymbal, and a hi-hat. And uh, when he does that first strike, which is the kick drum and the crash at the f- same time, he's pointing his drumstick at an unseen figure beyond where the camera is uh, positioned. It just looks really fucking awesome, doesn't it? It's, it's so iconic. There's no colour in that at all. It's just, it's clear, it's a clear drum set. A black and white suit. Wood coloured sticks though. Hmm, see? Should have thought about that, shouldn't I? And the way that guitar player moves actually puts me in mind of one of my favourite uh, underground English musicians, um, Tim Smith from the Cardiacs. Remember him? I talked about him in an earlier episode. Go and have a look. Go and have a look back. The Cardiacs influenced a lot of people. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the Hives would list uh, Cardiacs in their influences just because of the way that guitar player is moving. Bass player is so cool the way he's, he's, he um, plods forward. Um, and also he's playing a Rickenbacker 4003, I think that is. And those of you who have watched this uh, channel for any period of time will know that that's probably my favourite looking bass. And it sounds pretty good too. Especially when you see Rick James playing it. And hear Rick James playing it. And this guy. I love how stiff that sounds, like a 
people always talk about the pocket in in kind of worthy music and 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 in sort of I don't know funk and certain types of rock where it's really important to see how the the relationship between the bass and the drums are. But this guy's stiff as anything. You can just imagine his arm being like that. It doesn't look like that, but it's really sort of deliberately. It's like it's like when you see brutalist architecture. You know, there's, there's, it's, it's straight lines for the sake of straight lines, and um, it's a totally different kind of groove and really really fun to dance to. I think. And actually, I can hear a tambourine in there somewhere. Probably one of the loudest tambourines I've ever heard. He's got a massive um, Mick Jagger vibe about him, hasn't he? The white shoes is a nice touch. <laughs> and then this super saturated, nastier sounding guitar comes in at that point. Actually, it sounds like it's on the the distortion's on the bass somehow. Now it's all out in you know. You when he sings that you, he's kind of overblowing uh, through his. Um, it's very difficult to simulate this um, in a way that's what I would call a responsible way of singing. Like he's properly blasting so much air through his larynx that um, his his uh, vocal cords react in a totally unexpected way. He sort of sings this weird overtones thing. That's you know, it's not a note as such, but it's sort of more primal than that, I suppose. And definitely, definitely not the sort of thing you want to be doing every night. And yet they have been doing it every night for fucking years now. It's amazing how his voice has held up. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you'd be able to listen to that and say that that's, you know, what, um, you know, he's not like one of these crooners, or he's not, he's not using a, a huge, wide range of his, of his, um, he's not using a huge amount of his vocal range to be able to deliver this. It's actually quite. I say this with love, like a, a quite a monotonous. <laughs> and that thing that he pushes through is just like. I think that's pretty dangerous. It's a dangerous way to sing, living on the edge, you know. And you, t- and as I said before, you can't fake that. That's legit. That's attitude. Trust me when I say this. That's attitude. And I love it when singers um, hold their microphone in that position. If you'll permit me, I'll move this one to show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's such a 70s crooner way. I, I do that sometimes, but not because you know, it's actually not the best way to approach. Like, um, If you're singing into an SM58, this is not an SM58, but you know what I'm talking about, the, the one I've got tattooed on my arm, that, that, that kind of rock vocal mic. You want to be like this, straight down the barrel. Straight into the capsule, you know. Um, and if you do it like this, the, the the tone of it changes, but it looks really funny to me. It's like you're licking an ice cream. Um, and he's doing it in that way because that's one of those old 70s mics that he's kind of used to sing, sing across the top of. Again, it was the choice of the crooner orchestra way back there somewhere. Not, it's not You wouldn't use that for this kind of music. So it's a little bit like... Uh, not an anachronism, but it's an anam, anam, something that's like an anachronism, but instead of something that's out of time, it's something that's out of place. What would it be? Anam, 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 It's the wrong thing to do, but it feels so right. Like those, um, the way the drums are accenting those changes. It's the little touches that I admire in these things. You know, it's easy to get a really straight, stiff groove going, and and have everything sort of flying across that. But then these little accents and things. When when you're when you're a muso, do you know what I mean? It's the sort of thing that turns you on, turns you, makes your ears prick up. Not, I don't mean turns you on in that that way.
Oh, a brilliant little jump there. <laughs> I love that one. When the front leg goes out straight and then the back one is bent. That's cool. There's that saturated sound again. I think the, the video is implying that it's the guitar, but I feel like it might be on the bass, that, that distortion. It's just so nasty. Yeah, listen to that bass sound, it's really distorted. <laughs> what an attitude. See, uh, the, this is a great thing about this video. There are, there are some kind of um, artists and stuff who are just brilliant in front of a camera anyway, but then when you put a, an artist like this, who's already brilliant in front of a camera, with a mirror, and then they're addressing themselves in a the mirror, that's how you get all that kind of, the perfect pout, the perfect attitude. It's like when people sing into their hairbrushes into the bathroom mirror. That's what's happening here, but it's a real music video. It's genius, actually. <laughs> that bit of singing there. Oh, my God. Imagine the damage he's doing to his vocal cords. It's so irresponsible. I love it. <laughs> So he's doing the whole rest of the song in that style now. It's hard to listen to because I've done it myself and then sort of woke up the next day, can't sing, worried about your voice. It's like, how does he do it? This is a resilient uh, voice box he's got there, isn't he? What a solo. That's a great production. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? It makes me want to go and see the Hives. Fucking hell. I have actually seen them. We played a, we played a, a festival with the Hives and uh, got to know Pelly just a little bit on that day, and he was lovely. Um, thought he was really cool. Um, and that's brilliant. Awesome. And they always made records that sound like that, didn't they? That was just the beginning. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. to like subscribe hit the bell for notifications watch one of these two videos and if you get a chance go and see the hives it's fucking awesome all right punk i mean that's that what's the punk sign punk yeah that's it